All right, we're going to talk a little bit about the business cycle and how the economic indi indicators are incorporated within the business cycle. Uh, in a normal economy, we go through swings and periods of ups and downs where the indicators can look bad at times and they can also look good at other times. The whole hope is that our times of prosperity, recovery, and expansion periods, which you can see down here, outlast our times of contraction. So what I'm going to do is going to run through what's possibly happening to our economic indicators during each period. What's happening here in contraction with all of our indicators and what's happening with the expansion uh, during the expansion period with all our indicators as well. So we're going to start over here at this peak right here, the, the peak performance of the economy. Uh, what's happening here is we're seeing uh, our employment uh, numbers peak out, our GDP peak out, uh, inflation's reached its max, and eventually uh, the business cycle is going to t take a downturn. Uh, this can happen for a number of reasons. Uh, the reasons we've talked about in class uh, include things like the, the housing collapse uh, back in 2008 and then in 2009, which pushed us into a recession. Uh, so you should know or have a little bit of background on that. But when we experience a contraction period, what often happens with, with employment or rather unemployment is that we tend to see more people being laid off, more people without jobs. Uh, also during this time, retail sales are sluggish. People aren't very confident about, uh, about the economy, so consumer confidence is down. Uh, people aren't looking to make big purchases during these times because they uh, may be a little weary about where the economy is headed and possibly wherever their, uh, their own job is headed. So, uh, Also during this time, people aren't spending as much, so inflationary pressures are very low. Uh, and in severe times, they might actually deflate. So if it gets really bad during this contraction period and people really hold back on their purchasing as well as businesses, then you might experience deflation where the prices of goods and services tend to uh, tend to fall. Um, another thing that could happen is that we could experience stagflation, which is where we have runaway inflation and economic activity basically that's just at a standstill or negative. Um, and we'll talk more about that in class as well. Um, if, if this period of contraction gets very bad, uh, we could enter what we know as a recession. A recession is two declining periods of GDP or two quarters of consecutive GDP loss. Uh, and uh, depressions basically don't have a, a real definition. It's just an extended recession. And we only have one um, uh, example in our history to really go off of, and that was uh, the 1930s Great Depression. Obviously, GDP is very low. Manufacturers aren't producing a whole lot during this time, so our GDP numbers are low, if not negative, in a recession. Uh, poverty numbers will increase during this time. Energy prices uh, could be the cause of this, too. Uh, if energy prices are too high, people are going to cut back. Uh, so we could see increased uh, en energy prices, commodity prices here. Uh, we may be running a trade deficit, which means that we're importing more than we're exporting. We're relying on foreign uh, goods. Uh, housing starts are obviously down. Foreclosures might be increasing during this time as well. And when all this is happening, um, the federal government is going to try to step in and make something uh, or, or improve the situation. And they can do that one of two ways, really. Uh, the first way is to decrease taxes. If you decrease taxes on consumers and businesses, they'll have more money in their pocket to use, to expand, to uh, incorporate into the circular flow and hopefully improve things that way. Uh, they can pass stimulus packages uh, and, and basically uh, give people incentive to go out and purchase new items and give businesses the incentive to go out and expand. Uh, the Federal Reserve Bank, the Federal Reserve System, and uh, Ben Bernanke, what they can do is they can decrease interest rates to give people the incentive to borrow money to go out and make big purchases. And hopefully that leads us into a situation that we can start to reverse the tide here in this trough section and start in going into the expansion period, which brings us to our uh, what happens during expansion periods with the economic indicators. Notice here that from this point right here in the trough all the way up to this point right here, matching its previous peak, this is the recovery period. Okay, We don't get into prosperity until we get past that, that former peak and then you, can, you get into prosperity. And like I said, we hope that this expansion period is longer than the contraction period. So during this time, economic indicators are basically the exact exact opposite of what I said over here. So unemployment's going to be down. More people are being hired. People feel very confident about the economy. 
uh, retail sales are up, consumer confidence is up, uh, inflation is at a mar much more healthy rate, maybe three, maybe four percent, especially when you get up here. Okay, uh, so th that's recovering. You're not experiencing deflation. Hopefully, not experiencing any kind of stagflation. Uh, you're definitely not in your recession anymore because your your GDP is increasing. Your manufacturers are uh, are, are producing things that people are buying now. Uh, poverty rates are uh, obviously on the decline. Energy prices might be uh, moderating a little bit, so people can afford to uh, spend more money in the economy uh, we may we may experience a surplus here where our exports are are larger than our imports and therefore the value of the dollar is going to increase we're not going to see as much debt we may see new housing units increasing uh, foreclosure rates being down and uh, and that would be the basically what's going on in the entire expansion period now here's the problem if we allow this to continue on the federal government has said look we, uh, if we let this continue on all the way up here, uh, what will happen is inflation will become so severe that it will outpace uh, wages and salaries. So therefore, to decrease the money flow and to decrease inflationary pressures, what the government do here is the exact opposite of what they did down here. They're going to increase taxes, they'll increase interest rates so that there's not as much money in circulation so that we don't see runaway inflation and so that people don't uh, have to worry about not being able to purchase goods and services. So. Uh, we'll talk more about this and go in more depth in class, but that's a basic rundown of what's happening to the economic indicators uh, during the business cycle.